All right, welcome back to Vicky3 Academy. Here we are uh, discussing the Ottoman Empire. So I want to do a kick the tires for them um, now that we've now that we've completed our Tanzimat run because I feel pretty confident that I can lead you guys through best practices in 15 minutes. So as the Ottoman Empire, what are we? Who are we? Uh, what are we dealing with? So we're dealing with a, a an empire that is having a lot of serious problems right now. The Ottoman Empire has very recently lost control of Greece during the Greek War of Independence, not to mention that now they have to deal with the fact that Egypt not only um, has gained basic independence under this uh, Khedive uh, Muhammad Ali, but he's also won a, a very recent war against the Ottoman Empire for control of the Levant. So you, Mahmoud II, are, are one of the characters who is, is trying desperately to reform the Ottoman Empire. Um, in history, you die in three years. In Victoria 3, it'll probably be more like 30, because um, right now the rulers live forever. Um, but that's okay, because he's he really is a very powerful and effective leader. Same with same with his his uh, his son, um, Prince Abdul Majid. Also, the, this is the character who actually oversaw um, the Tanzimat reform package in real life. But it did get mostly put together by Mahmoud II. So it's it's sort of a, a father son combination package. Um, but what are you trying to do? If you're trying to keep the Ottoman Empire alive, well, you're trying to deal with this sick man of Europe journal entry. You have a special journal entry as the Ottoman Empire that if you fail it, you basically lose the game. Um, and so that's what this thing is doing. It's setting everything up for you. But unfortunately, it's setting up some serious problems, right? Minus 33% prestige. That means it's going to be really hard for you to regain great power status. Um, minus 25% bureaucracy and 25% taxation capacity. That means that you're going to have enormous problems governing new territory, as well as expanding your, in, your institutions, um, and problems with just getting money out of your pops. And then you also have a conscriptable battalions debuff. Um, in this tiny little religious tax on, on pops uh, that you're discriminating against. Oh boy, rough, rough times. Um, fortunately, the game offers you multiple ways to get out of it. Um, so I'm just going to go through and we're going to pin all of these and then very briefly discuss which ones you should be trying to do in 1.0.6 and which ones you shouldn't. Um, so the first one that I think everybody needs to be trying to do as quickly as possible is bureaucratic reform. Bureaucratic reform, if you can get this done, is going to dramatically, dramatically transform uh, the nature of your economy. Um, it is going to require you get out of hereditary bureaucrats and land-based taxations. Um, so it, as the Ottoman Empire, you do have a lot of bad laws in here, a lot of laws that are making your landowners stronger, and you need to get rid of those. Um, but one of the most important ones that I think people are still kind of sleeping on Yes, serfdom, slavery, army models, those are all important ones too. Um, but I think getting out of hereditary bureaucrats and into anything else is just way more important than your army model change um, in terms of, of cascading implications. So the fact that you, you cannot re-roll this dude, because you can't, you can't re-roll this dude. Um, sometimes your landowner is fixed, and in this one, it is fixed. You have a landowner moderate here always. Um, unless you use corn laws, which we'll, we'll talk about. Uh, but it means that you're not going to be able to rely on re-rolling into, into jingoist for professional army or pacifist for, for national militia. So instead, you got to combat the landowner else, somewhere else. Appointed bureaucrats is a great way to do it, because if you have appointed bureaucrats, then your uh, government administration will no longer employ a bunch of aristocrats, which means that not only are you taking away the 25% um, bonus here to local governors, but you're also taking away a bunch of aristocrats, which is which is going to make you a lot stronger. Not to, not to mention that it's going to get you extra bureaucrats, which is going to make your intelligentsia stronger. And because this is a monarchy, you're getting your legitimacy. You're getting right now a lot of legitimacy from the local governors, but you don't have to keep them around. As soon as you can, you can get rid of these guys, start suppressing them, um, and 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 make progress. But you don't want to suppress them immediately. Because um, you want you want to use them for something. You want to use them for corn laws. Um, basically, for corn laws, we'll get back to the Tansimat stuff. But we you need to understand how important um, law work is in the early game to to help you survive. And one of the things that can help law work go a little smoother is corn laws. Because um, what you can do, you see here, if you have a powerful local governor that's part of your government. Uh, you need to do export prioritized tariffs on grain. So you have to go in your market and you have to go over to here and you're like, oh no, we have a, a 
we have less we we have less than we than we're currently consuming. Why on earth would we encourage exports? You're gonna starve all of your peasants to death. I mean, maybe, but that sounds like a peasant problem. Um, because what this is gonna do is it's gonna set us down the road to uh, corn laws, which is gonna open up this little journal entry here. Um, and this journal entry is gonna is gonna transform the nature of our economy because it's gonna eventually lead to a uh, free market leader taking over local governors, which means we can go in here and we can change our economic system from traditional to traditionalism to laissez-faire with the support of the local governors. And they won't just like it, they will love it. They will go indiscriminately crazy happy going from traditionalism to laissez-faire if they have a, a, free, le a free trade leader. Um, in control of the party, which is what you can get from corn laws. So by doing that, then you can do all of this other stuff that you need without the lot, the landowners even getting mad because they'll just love you. They, they will, they will like write you love letters from prison. Um, and so get corn laws done. Then you can do bureaucratic reform pretty easily with any combination of, of IGs. I think that generally speaking, um, as the, as the Ottomans, you're going to be mostly using intelligentsia and friends, um, as long as you have Mahmoud II or Abdul Majid around, because you're going to get a lot of a lot of clout from them by just over the course of the next two years with these guys being bolstered and these guys being suppressed. Once you once you can do that, um, but you can't do that until after you do your your free trade. At the beginning, you can just be bolstering intelligentsia, but that'll be good enough. You can do bolster intelligentsia and bolster Ulema if you really wanted to. Um, cause that's another way to drain extra clout from the local governors, but your, your starting leader for the Olema is like super old. And so we'll, will hopefully die at some point, at which point you, you, you'll need to know who's going to be in control of, of the Olema here. One thing I want to tell you, uh, as we go up to army modernization is the way this works. Um, it's, it sounds kind of nonsensical, but basically you just need to have, uh, you need some buildings. You need to you need to build some stuff, um, and then you need uh, basically relatively uh, relatively advanced troops. You need line infantry and mobile artillery, and then if you are having issues, just you know building that a very 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 large barrack. Um, don't worry about it, because you know what? As the Ottomans, you have a pretty big, pretty big population. Just switch into national militia. Um, if you do peasant levies into national militia later, you can go to professional army or conscription pretty easily. Um, so I like that progress for the Ottomans. Again, they just have so many pops. And then you can even use uh, conscription to to activate army modernization, because you just need 250. They don't need to be coming from non conscripts. So you can get the you can get this one by fighting really any medium medium sized war which you're going to have to fight against Egypt anyway, because um, you're going to probably want to do Reclaim Syria. So Army Modernization, I think, is basically free. I think this one, this one's going to be hard and is going to require you to do some development first, probably Corn Laws. Army Modernization is mostly just going to require that you get um, line inf infantry technology and then Napoleonic Warfare, which you're going to want to get both of those anyway, because that'll help you fight Egypt. Suppressed Separatism is basically free. Um, just don't don't make the the christians super duper angry like don't don't do don't let uh situations get out of control and so if you need to suppress them um like when you get little events that are like hey do you want to do you want to get five infamy um but shut down this this event chain the answer is basically always yes um but this one is almost ex is almost impossible to fail and so you're gonna have like a 15 year timer basically on on a guaranteed close to Tanzimat if you if you play it right. Ignore this one. Uh, the educational reform is impossible. Increased literacy rate by 35% means that you have to have a 57% um, literacy rate in order to make act, uh, progress here. That is going to require you to have a level three religious uh, schools education institution because that's going to be the probably the easiest one for you to get um but it's also going to require you to do just like a lot of construction uh to increase wealth so because that way you can get uh literacy out of that because you're gonna have you're gonna have some problems with your literacy because of your education access um because your education access is going to be uh, restricted because you're going to have some discriminated pops that you have a that you have access to as the Ottomans because you have a lot of Christians living here, um, and so you're you're just you're 
it's this 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 costs way 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 too much if this was get to 35 percent um literacy i think it would be worth keeping in mind but as it stands i don't i wouldn't even pin that one it's not it's not doable urbanization is doable urbanization isn't that hard all you need to to do in order to urbanize is to understand how urbanization works um so what's a what's a good one Albania. Albania is a good one. So let's mouse over this. It says Albania has 45 urbanization. Okay, so what is 45 urbanization? If you mouse over textile mills, it says other plus 20 urbanization total. That means each level of textile mill gets 20 urbanization. Um, each level of iron mines gets 10. Each level of cotton gets 5. So just like build industries and then you'll hit level one urbanization which is all you need all this is is 75 percent have an urban center not a level three not a level five a level one um and so this one is very easy to get if you struggle with reclaiming syria um reclaiming syria is kind of tricky and so i'm happy that these four are all very doable um because this one requires that egypt when you start a reclaim war against them because you have claims on all these territories um you want to get them to fight you and lose and you kind of have to do it twice because i don't think there's a way for you to get enough maneuvers to take all of the levant back in one war i've i've tried it multiple times and i think right now with the way um reclaim state is balanced you literally cannot get all of the states back in one war which means you need two wars against egypt in order to get syria back um which means that it's it's going to be pretty hard to complete the egypt side if you complete tanzimat reclaim syria then you get a, a one where you reclaim egypt but i think that because of the way things are structured in 1.0.6 um the best you can do here is get is just finish reclaim syria so ottoman empire what are you trying to do you're trying to avoid the sick man of Europe thing, because if you don't, then you get the dead man of Europe, um, which basically is going to end your campaign. If you if you end up with a dead man of Europe, you're you're going to lose. So how do you how do you avoid it? Well, it, I would encourage people to implement the 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 learnings from the rest of the channel. Um, you're going to want to get your corn, your corn law governor here with your free trade, and then you're going to want to switch over to uh, laissez-faire. Then you're going to kick the local governor out of out of power, and you're probably going to bring the Olema, maybe the Olema and the petite bourgeoisie in. Um, you may want to switch into landed voting in the meantime. That's also really helpful. Um, you probably want to switch into racial segregation as well. Racial segregation means anyone who shares a heritage cultural trait with you is going to be non-discriminated against. And as it stands, um, that's actually a lot of pops because Mashriki are Middle Eastern heritage. Turks are Middle Eastern heritage. Persian, Middle, East, Middle Eastern heritage. Um, Maghrebi, Middle Eastern heritage. You, you can tolerate like basically all of the Middle East um, if you can switch into into racial segregation. Racial segregation is such a huge upgrade over national supremacy in the beginning of the game that I think people need to try be trying to figure out a way to do it as quickly as possible. Um, so just just be aware that there are like a lot of there are a lot of things out there floating around in terms of your law changes that you need to prioritize in the beginning of the game as the Ottomans. Um, and so maintaining a relatively high legitimacy by having a strong intelligentsia plus one or maybe two friends uh, is going to be really important to you so for the same reason i would not try to go into very high taxes i would try to stay at either medium or high taxes just for the legitimacy because you're going to need it you you got a lot of laws you got to change you got a lot of laws you got to change fortunately your resources are not too bad you do have access to the holy trinity of uh of construction you have plenty of coal look at that 72 stack in Kastamonu. Um, uh, 48 in Aiden, 40 in southern Serbia. That's a lot. Um, and then we've got tons and tons of iron. The only thing that you're a little light on as the Ottomans is wood. Um, but fortunately, if you can move very quickly into into iron frame buildings, then you can mostly preserve your your wood for other use. And then, of course, by the time you get into steel frame buildings, then like your wood is no longer. Your, your wood is no longer good here by the time you get into steel frame buildings, which is why I think getting getting it early as the Ottoman Empire is generally advisable. 
Um, in terms of war against Egypt, it's it's usually not that difficult, especially if you're in national militia, because you just mobilize your army, um, like a little bit of your army, enough that Egypt can't overrun you, uh, and then they usually don't back down and then if you can get to the war part that like the actual war part then you can go through and conscript a whole bunch of pops and then just like crush the egyptians it's because your your navy is also like a lot bigger and so doing a naval invasion uh on egypt you know once you've once you've built up your navy a little bit um doing a naval invasion on, e on egypt is going to allow you to hold them on this front maybe on this front as well and then just send a bunch of troops down to run straight up the Nile. And then and then you can win pretty easily. Um, yeah, all right. That's Walker. This is a, just a basic concept here for how to play the Ottoman Empire, a, an Ottoman em Empire guide based off of my experiences. If you have any any questions, um, feel free to let me know. I think, I think generally speaking, if you're trying to play as the Ottomans, once you get past the, the initial gap, um, you do have a lot of options in terms of expansion out here. Don't be shy. Like there's, there's, if you, if you are playing it as a campaign for basically anyone, um, then you want to prioritize colonizing in here, especially if you have a large incorporated state population, you can colonize here pretty easily. So get, get, go ahead and get quinine after you've, after you've dealt with the Kedivate. If you have the time to pick up Persia, then obviously that's also really helpful because you'll, you, the other thing that you'll have as the Ottoman Empire that we haven't really talked about is just infinite amounts of oil, right? You're all, you got tons of oil right here. You got it here, you got it here, um, you've got it here, oh no, Fars, like just tons and tons of oil. And so, playing as the Ottomans, it's, you have a very, very strong mid to late game. Um, so just set yourself up for that. All right. Uh, that's Walker. Take care.